A rather old show that my wife are watching recently is The Rocky and Bullwinkle Show. And one of my favorite parts of that show is Fractured Fairy Tales, where they take a, a familiar fairy tale and they give it a <laughs> twist. And the one we were watching last week was the fractured fairy tale of, of a fisherman who went out and he caught himself a mermaid. And when he caught the mermaid, when he let it go, he was given wishes. Now, he couldn't think of what he could ask for himself, so he asked his wife what she wanted. And she asked for a new apron, and she got more than that. And then after she got more than that, she didn't feel like she could wash her dishes in such a shabby place. So she got a yacht. And then that wasn't enough. So she got something else, and then she got something else, and then she got something else, and she, she wasn't able to be happy. She wanted to be the queen of the universe. And the fisherman finally was asked, well, what do you want? He said, I just want her to be happy. And so he returned. She said she should be happy. And everything was as it was before. She was back in her shabby apron and perfectly happy. This weekend we've been looking at the idea of identity, who we are. And part of that identity of in the story of this fractured fairy tale of the fisherman and the mermaid was that who this wife of his was was happily married to him just the way things were. And as things changed, as she got new things, then it became not enough. She got a little taste, and a little bit more of a taste, and a little bit more of a taste, and it just wasn't enough. After that, it wasn't enough but strip it away, and it was plenty. What do we need? Where is our identity? We have something that, that we refer to as baptismal identity. And if we look at that idea, for those who, who choose to use baptism, who, who come to be baptized, what the baptism is about and several of you did, had baptized, were baptized last year. And I read this quote. So that baptism should be the defining moment in a person's life, demanding radical discipleship and missionary responsibilities amid a hostile world. Baptism should be the defining moment in a person's life, demanding radical discipleship and missionary responsibilities amid a hostile world. Now, you may wonder what this passage has to do with that. The thing is, is that in Corinthians chapter 10, the people just figured that baptism was this magic thing that happened to them that meant they never had to worry about sin again, so let's go and do as much of it as we can. Remember the story from a few weeks ago talking about the gangster who wouldn't stop being a gangster. He said, it's just who I am. And they said, but it can't be. And that's what Paul is saying to these people. This is just who we are. Aren't we supposed to stay the same after we become Christians? After baptism? After making a commitment publicly? The answer is no. Paul says to them, well, just look at your history. Look at the people of Israel. They were baptized into the sea and in the Jordan River and going through the Red Sea. They were baptized in this way. They had manna from heaven. They had the rock that was Jesus Christ with them the whole time. Where did the rock, where did the water come from? Paul is saying it's Jesus Christ himself went with them and provided them that sustenance, that water through which they would not have to thirst. But the reality was that all these people, so many of these people, they made mistake after mistake after mistake because even after such a wonderful thing of being taken out of Egypt, they still sin. It's not just a case of they heard about God's wonderful works, they lived it. Isn't it amazing how quickly we can fall into, into leaning our, on our own understandings? We talked about this last night at the retreats. We looked at the Hall of Fame from Hebrews chapter 11. 
of each person and what they went through and that faith that they needed to have, that faith in God, that faith in a person. And, and then in that passage, it, it, let's look at that real quick. Hebrews chapter 11. It says in verse 6, And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists. And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And so we, we looked at that idea. If we don't have faith, if we don't trust in God, we can't have faith and we can't please God because we're basically saying he doesn't exist. He's saying he's a good feeling. He's, he's just, you know, we just got this, this word from somewhere. We don't know where, you know, if there's a God. So if you go through that passage from 11, how? I asked, the, I asked all the kids, how could they do it if they were trying to do it without faith in God? What would they have done? And most of them said they'd go crazy. They'd go crazy, they wouldn't do anything, they wouldn't respond, because why should they? Why should they? But when you have faith in God walks along with it, and then the question is, how can you have seen the works and miracle works of God just one day, and then just a few days later, stop listening to him. Basically saying he doesn't exist. Basically saying he doesn't care for us. And literally, that's what the people of Israel did when they were in the desert. They said, God has abandoned us out here in the desert. He's left us to die. You know, and we're getting sick of this man. I can't even bring us meat. And so he gave us gave them enough meat that they started. They had too much of it. It's coming out of their nostrils, it says. So if you want meat, I'll give you meat. <laughs> but how quickly, how quickly can that, that come, that, that thought of, you know, well, God provided me for yesterday, but what about tomorrow? What about today? That's not a faith in God. That's a faith in the moment. We proclaim our identity. One way that we proclaim our identity in the church is through baptism. That is that pu public proclamation to say, I believe in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to make a commitment from this day forward to live a life that is different. The same study... Sam study talks about this and that idea of what does it mean to become a Christian? What does it mean to, after, after making this proclamation, living this out? It says the process of becoming a Christian, the imparting of the essentials of the faith, is a chief concern of the Christian community from its earliest beginnings. This is not as early as it gets here in chapter 10. Don't simply lay aside the commands of God. Listen to what his commands are. Live a life that is better. Live a life that is outstanding to God. I've been talking over and over again during this Lenten season. Part of our identity as Christians should be that when people look at us, they see Christ. 